Good afternoon, everyone. It is Tuesday, April the 14th, and I'm actually in my office right now because I'm finding my internet outside has been a little spotty lately. Uh, I'm going to actually going to be running out to uh, pick up a, a better uh, routing system uh, via curbside pickup from Canada Computers a little later on, so hopefully that'll solve it and then uh, I can actually record to my heart's content. So today I just wanted to quickly set, give you a bit of a story and actually challenge all of you to do the like. So my my story today is how I was able to re reach a particular kind of fandom via an unusual method. And I'd love you, all of you to, to think about it. And if there's something you really loved, but maybe the journey to get there was strange, uh, you know, Tell a story. I mean, I think this is a great time for us all to share these particular adventures. So here is mine. As a child, I was huge into reading. I think as soon as I would, could figure out what all the words on the page really meant, I just started absorbing all of it. I didn't have a huge amount of friends, so so books were were that that journey, and you know, I I, I just kept reading more and more and more. Sometimes I would read uh, you know multiple books per week, <laughs> up, upwards of a dozen sometimes per week. One series of books that I received though changed a lot for me. And that was my grandparents in Woodbridge, their next door neighbor, one day gave me a bunch of different books. Uh, so one of them was uh, Hans Brinker by uh, Mary Mapes Dodge. Uh, and then there were two books specifically written by Samuel Clemens, although you might know him as Mark Twain, uh, wrote Huckleberry Finn and the one that really, really changed thing, Tom Sawyer. I loved these books. And yes, there is some controversy uh, about them today due to their uh, their use of language, but there weren't books that was, were meant to be uh, negative. They were, they were a social commentary, really, uh, that, that he would, would write. There was the times of the day. But I was so enamored with Tom Sawyer that I remember going with my grandfather to a, a local restaurant uh, that was just up on uh, Highway 7 and uh, in Islington um, or by uh, Highway 7 and Kipling sorry uh, and they had those little jukeboxes all in the walls that you know a lot of places still have them today you'll in wimpies and things like that you'll you'll find them uh, and I was you know the typical kid I was flipping through flipping through flipping through and what do I come across but the words Tom Sawyer? Oh, what's that? Well, my grandfather was not a big fan of, of rock music, but uh, I, I think he had heard the, the term probably from my dad. Uh, oh, that's, 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 a, that's a hard rock band. You, they're no good. You know, that's what it kind of, kind of says. So, so I wasn't going to get the, the pleasure of playing it in that particular place. But then I was thinking about it. Tom Sawyer by this band called Rush. I, I, I got to check this out because I love Tom Sawyer so much. This, this can't go wrong. But I know somebody who does possibly have that stuff because my dad has all the cool albums. So I was able to, to uh, get uh, you know, his copy of Moving Pictures by Rush. That had the song, the title track, the very, er, not the title track, sorry, the opening track was Tom Sawyer. And so I was, uh, was allowed to drop the needle on, on the, uh, the record, and right away from those opening chords, a journey had begun. And to this day, you know, years and years and years, 40 years later, I am still a huge Rush fan. So sadly, Neil Parrott, the the lyricist uh, and and drummer, uh, extraordinary drummer, one of the greatest drummers of the, of the world, passed away not too long ago, and I'm still heartbroken in many ways by that. Uh, but I will always carry with me the love of Rush. So a little bit of information about Tom Sawyer. So though Neil uh, wrote the lyrics for the band almost hundred percent, 
the lyrics for Tom Sawyer were actually provided partly by another lyricist by the name of Pi Dubois. Now, Pi was the lyricist for Max Webster, uh, which was uh, another band that would eventually provide us with Kim Mitchell. Now, uh, so uh, uh, Pi and, and Neil were friends, uh, you know, uh, Rush and Max Webster had actually done a, a song on uh, one of Max Webster's albums called Battle Scar, which is a fun, fun track of, of just just of music just slamming you. There's so much going on there. And, uh, you know, the, the song was originally titled Louis the Lawyer. So Max Max Webster didn't want to do the song. So so Pi gave gave the the song to to Neil, who would then turn it into the lyrics for Tom Sawyer. So so I recommend everybody if you haven't heard Tom Sawyer by Rush, I don't know what cave you're living in, but you know what, <laughs> drop it on, and listen to that song. It's a great song. Uh, it's probably a song that most people, if you actually ask them about Rush, they would probably know that one. Uh, you know, so so yeah, check them out. But also, think about once again going back to my intro of this video. Think about your own own fandom, something that you approached from a non-direct manner. You know, tell the story. I want to hear hear your stories. Share them and uh, drop me a note and say hi. I'd love to hear from you, and we will talk to you tomorrow.